trauma bonds. So I received a message from a frantic person on um, TikTok and they said, I've been watching your content. It's very helpful. Perhaps you can help me. Uh, I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder and um, you know, I'm back living at, at home with my mom. I'm going through the worst spells of suicidal tendencies and self-harm, uh, but I'm also pregnant right now and I'm uh, struggling and I, and I really need help. And so I rendered assistance to the extent that I could, but ultimately I told her that in order for her to actually heal, uh, to go beyond just temporary assistance, but to actually heal, She's going to need to get away from any abusive people in her life. Now, this caused her to pause because she lives with her mom, but her mom is her biggest abuser. There's been times where her mom has smashed her head into the wall, as she calls her all types of terrible, terrible names, uh, tears down her self-esteem, her self-worth. And so she's been very ver verbally abusive, very physically abusive. And now she's living at home and she's pregnant, living with her mom. And so I said, you, you have to leave the toxic abuser in order for you to fully heal. She said, I can't do that. That's my mom and I love her. Plus, I don't have money. Plus, I'm pregnant. And that was the end of us working together. So wherever she is and hopefully she's doing okay, she has not been able to break the relationship that is actually breaking her. When we look carefully at the mental illness that we're struggling with, even if you're just having anxiety, depression, you will notice it spikes when you have recently had contact with someone who is toxic. So what do I mean by a toxic person? A person that's toxic is a person that is poisonous. Of course, we're speaking in the energy realm, so we're not talking about physical poison. We're talking about someone who is uh, verbally abusive, uh, who is neglectful of your emotional needs. Uh, sorry, it looks like some kind of emergency outside. I've got sirens coming past the, the building here. But someone who is neglectful of your emotional needs, someone who is neglectful of your of your physical well-being someone who is abandoning right someone who is abusive sexually physically uh, it, a lot of times the toxicity comes through the words and the treatment a lot of times the toxicity comes through the words and the treatment so if their treatment and their words give you a feeling like you are lesser than that is a toxic person for you right so so you have to recognize what toxicity is and unfortunately for us, sometimes the toxic person could be a title holder in our life. Mom, dad, son, daughter, they have a title. And that makes it all, all the more difficult when it comes down to the reality that we may need to put distance between ourselves and that toxic person. But it's important to understand what a trauma bond is and how to break it. So when people hear the term trauma bond, uh, they tend to think, well, it's a bond that you create with someone after you've been through a traumatic event. And that's not what we mean exactly when we say trauma bond in terms of psychology and healing. What we're saying is that you have an attachment to a person that's like love, except this person is not loving to you. So a trauma bond is an attachment to a person that is detrimental to you. See if you can commit that one to memory. A trauma bond is an attachment to a person that is actually detrimental to you. Normally, we would love or be attached to someone that is to our benefit, that is looking out for our well-being, that is helpful to us, that's loving towards us, that's giving towards us, that sacrifices for us. What happens with a trauma bond is you are now in a relationship that's lopsided. You might feel love toward them. You might do loving things for them. And even if they do some loving things for you, ultimately, 
there to your detriment. You are in love with a toxic person. The phenomena has been observed as Stockholm Syndrome, which is where kidnapper, kidnappees, those who are kidnapped, find themselves developing an attachment to their kidnapper. So even though they're victims of a violent crime, in order to survive, they start to fawn. They go into this fawn response to their kidnappers, start to feel sorry for the kidnapper, empathy for their situation. And it's so strong that even when police come to rescue them, they will defend the kidnapper. They will defend the criminal who held them against their will. It's illogical. It's a trauma bond. And so Stockholm Syndrome is the same thing that happens to a child. Oftentimes when they have an abusive parent, the child doesn't think, ah, this person's toxic, I'm out of here. Because they're a child. Their survival depends on the person and also their emotional survival depends on the idea that they have a mom that loves them or a dad that loves them. And so they will actually form an attachment to someone who's harming them, who's hurtful toward them, who's abusive or neglectful toward them. And for many of us in this room, that was our moms or dads. They were not all good with the parenting. Some of the things they did were nice. Some of the things they did were nice. Maybe they fed us. Maybe they clothed us. But when it came to certain things, they crossed the line. They would extinguish our self-worth, our self-esteem, or they would talk badly about us. Maybe it was only when they were upset, or maybe it was only when they were drunk. But whatever excuse we made for them, their conduct was toxic. It was abusive. And so we may have been one of those children that formed a trauma bond to our own parent. Some of these trauma bonds are so extreme that even as the kid passes the age of 18, 19, 20, they continue to live with their abusive parent, their toxic parent, their suffocating parent, their controlling parents. And they don't want to leave. Part of them wants to leave, but part of them doesn't have the self-worth, the self-esteem. And some parents will go as far as to cripple the children, taking away their means of income or making them work, but then taking their money. Or maybe they allow them to work, but they tell them you can't make it out there on your own. You don't have the life skills. You won't be able to attract a mate. You're not good enough. You're not attractive enough. You don't want to live alone. It's scary out there. And so the child has ingrained in their, in their mind the idea that they could not make it on their own. This is especially true for many women who for centuries uh, have not <laughs> have not felt safe just moving away from your tribe of origin. And so it seems intuitive to stay with your family because it's how you ensure your survival. It's how you ensure your safety. But now what when that family is the very ones who are making you unsafe? It puts these young ladies in an impossible situation. And so to survive it, many of them develop a trauma bond, an idea that the person who actually treats them with contempt loves them, or that they should continue to love the person who hates them or treats them poorly. So again, trauma bond is anytime we have an attachment to someone or something that's detrimental to us. Have you ever been trauma bonded to someone? I know they're abusive, but I can't leave because I love them. I had one client. Well, she's still technically my client, but she's not very regular on her sessions. She's probably not here on this call tonight. But she, wherever she is, hasn't forgotten about her boyfriend on and again, off again. She describes him as a sociopath. And uh, when he gets really mad, it's physical abuse. Not uncommon that he's kicking her head once he's got her on the ground. And she's ended up in the hospital several times because of it. She's called the police on him before. She's done the police reports before. But then she ends up going back again and again.
And each time it causes her to regress in her progress, in her healing progress. She gets on the phone with the ex-boyfriend and the ex-boyfriend's hitting her with all the expletives and all the tearing down and you could never and I'm out here and I'm going to go sleep with these girls and these girls. And he's trying, he's trying to say things to get her upset. And then, of course, he has to mock her for progress in her therapy, right? Uh, that therapy is not really working for you. That healing is not really working for you. I think she would be right when she called him a sociopath. And he was actually diagnosed with something like, uh, it was the other, not the NPD, but it was like ASP or something. I forgot what the acronym for it is. Antisocial personality disorder. But what do we do when we're in situations like this? If I ask her, why, why do you feel so attracted to him? Well, he's the only one for me. He's the only one that can understand me. Honestly, I can't feel attracted to anyone else. It's just not possible. We get ourselves in impossible situations with our trauma bonds. For, for many, it's with their parents. For some, it's with abusive mates, abusive spouses. Sometimes it comes down to our low self-worth, low self-esteem. If we're honest, we just don't feel like we could do better. We don't feel like we would even want better or deserve better. That's a symptom of our complex trauma. And other times, uh, it's because we're brainwashed by the family of origin. We believe that family is everything. That's what we've been taught. Family, it's all about family. And so we're like... Family is everything. It's we're brainwashed. Family is everything. I can't leave my family. It's all about family. But if you're struggling with this concept with your family of origin, I just want to give you a moment to sort of unbrainwash the brainwashing for a moment. Um, family, of course, should be important. Um, but is it really everything? Is family meant to be our God? In fact, uh, isn't there a scripture in the Bible where Jesus says, if anyone has more affection for mother or father than for me, he is not worthy of me? That's a strong statement. If anyone has more affection for mother or father than for me, they're not worthy of me. In other words, according to the Bible, family isn't everything. Blood might be thicker than water, but it ain't thicker than Holy Spirit. So you got to think about the energy that you're cultivating in your life and ask yourself, is this because I was brainwashed to believe this must be how I treat this person because they're my father or they're my mother? They have this title in my life. When you actually take a step back and you break down what you're really looking at, the family of origin is just that. It's the place where you come from genetically. There's not a greater universal significance to the family of origin. We have some shared experiences. We have history with these people. So if they're not toxic, then great. Have dinner with them every once in a while because you have shared history and you'll, you'll have good times talking about that shared history. But if they are toxic, and we need to get really real. We need to ask ourselves, if this person didn't have this title, would I choose them as a friend? Just think about it. That mom that grabs you by the hair out in the parking lot, smacks you up. That mom that tears you down and acts like a saint in front of everyone. If that woman just were someone else in the community, would you say, Knowing what I know about her, I would like to be her friend. I would like her to be close to me. I would choose her as my mentor. What's the, what's the answer to that question? If the answer is no, if this is not someone that, that you would normally choose, if this is not someone that you see as healthy, then you have to admit that your mom is toxic, they're a bad associate, and you should cut them off. Despite the title. Because there are certain things we cannot sacrifice, and our mind is one of them. Our spirituality is one of them. Our physical health is one of them. 
So if someone is detrimental to our mental health, to our emotional health, all of that being tied to the physical health, not to mention they could be potentially abusive. If they're detrimental to all that, we need to cut them off or cut them back. It doesn't matter the type. So don't get caught up on that. But it's my mom. Yeah, but what does it? Once you are, once you are an adult, that person owes you nothing and you owe them nothing. So don't fall for the brainwashing because they've been telling you since you were a child, you owe me. I quit college to take care of you. Ma'am, you had a child. Of course you have to quit school, take care of your child. That's what you're supposed to do. It's your child. That was your situation in life. Those were your choices. I don't owe you for that. For water and, and food that I was eating and drinking when I was a helpless infant? You want me to give you crazy credit for caring for a helpless infant that you created? I am grateful. But I didn't ask to be here. So thank you for not killing me <laughs> when you when you could have, you know. I mean, but it's so the idea that you would not care for the infant that you created is actually so immoral and so illegal that you know there's a limited, you know, thank you. I appreciate it. But this doesn't mean now the rest of my life I am an indentured servant to you. I owe you, thank you so much. What do you need, mother? What do you need? Because when I was an infant that you created, you took care of me. It can't be that way. It's natural for us to love our parents. And again, if you're one of those people who has a mother that's kind, imperfect, but not abusive, not toxic, then give her all the love. There's no problem there. You can keep your attachment to them. But once you recognize that this person is crippling to your well-being, to your health, to your growth, Got to cut it off. Got to cut it off. We have to recognize the same with the abusive men in our family, fathers, brothers. Some of us have woken up to uh, forced incestual situations because that's how abusive some of these men in our family were. We have to get away from these people just because of the psychological torture of watching them continue to be treated well, while you know the way that they treated you, while you know what they did, while you reached out for help, while you asked people, you told your mom and said, please, this person abused me and it was just swept under the rug. That's for that very reason, you just have to separate it. So you just aren't continually confronted with the injustice of that because it keeps giving you the wrong signal about yourself, that you're not worthy of justice, that you're not worthy of good treatment. And that is toxic. Pay attention to the little controlling things that the people in your life will do. If you have mothers, bosses, aunts, uncles, whoever, they have a little authority in your life and they try to uh, clip your wings. They don't want to see you fly. They try to clip your wings. They say, uh, hey, yeah, you know, you should get on our phone plan. Hey, yeah, you know, uh, you should uh, quit your job and let us take care of you. Hey, yeah, you know, and they take away your home and they take away your car and they take away things that can allow you to be independent. Don't fall for that. This is just classic, classic abuse tactics. What they're doing is they're creating enmeshment so that you are dependent on them. They want that because they know they have no other basis or way of keeping you in the relationship. I repeat, the reason why your abusive boyfriend, girlfriend, mother, father wants to keep taking away all of your items of individuality. No, you should give me your phone. You should give me your keys. You should give me your car. You should give that up. You should turn that in. You should not work there anymore is because they are cutting off your ability to leave. Because they know that down the pipeline, they've got a bunch of abuse for you. And they have no other basis. There's no other reason that you would stay. So they have to use manipulation. They have to use enmeshment to keep you in the relationship. Don't fall for it. 
pay attention, keep your stuff, always keep your bank account, always keep your keys close. When you go visit toxic parents, have your keys right there. Keep your, keep your car on the street, not blocked, not blocked in. Don't, oh, I'm going over for dinner with my, with my somewhat toxic family and then let people block your car. No, never get trapped with them. Never get trapped with them. Always have an escape plan. Keep your phone on your own plan. Keep your bank account. Move out. Have a house of your own. Move away. Don't tell people where you're going. Don't tell people what you're doing. Don't tell people where you're working. Don't hide information. Why? Why are we protecting personal information? It's all going to be used against you. When you have a toxic family member, what you say can and will be used against you. It will be used against you. So we don't we don't share with toxic family members. Moms, dads, boyfriends, girlfriends. We don't share with the toxic people what's going on. Don't tell them where you're at, what you're doing. Right. Ultimately, we're going to need to break away. So one good way that you can approach this process is reminding yourself that this breakaway could just be temporary. It's just for now. So take it one day at a time. You don't have to say, I'm never speaking to them again. Don't wait until you're angry. I don't want you severing relationships based on emotion. That's really what got us here anyway. It's that you've been doing everything based on emotion. You fawned because of emotion. You keep fawning because of emotion. It's all this fear, fear, fear. You don't want to leave them because of emotion. What we want to do is we want to get into the logical mind. Pause, deliberate. And then plan our moves of what we're going to do. Plan our steps. The separation. It's for now. Don't worry about how long it's going to last. Probably a long time. But for now, it's just for now. You need the space to just allow your mind to heal, to grow. Focus on your goals, your purpose. You can't focus on your purpose while you got somebody telling you you're not capable of doing your purpose. How are you supposed to be successful under those circumstances? Can't do it. The emotions keep you locked in. I don't want to be alone. We got to change that thinking. What's logical? Well, actually being alone could be one of the best things that happened to me because it could be one of the first times in my life I don't have anyone abusing me. Stay in the logic. Stay in the logic. I have to be alone for a little while because you've got to be single in order to find your, your, your mate. You can't just always have someone and then expect that your dream scenario is going to come. doesn't work that way. Good. Stay in the logic. Stay in logic. I, I'm, I'm alone, but it's temporary. I don't have to feel lonely. I just have to focus back on my purpose. Typically, whenever you're feeling those pains of loneliness, when you get refocused on, number one, why it would be too soon to be in a relationship with someone, and number two, what your purpose is, the loneliness evaporates because we need a little bit of alone time to work on our purpose. Because you can't really have someone standing over you while you're trying to build your website and you're trying to uh, sing your album and you're trying to uh, write your book. Like you need actually a little bit of space. We actually need space, guys. Uh, it's been holding you back that you're keeping yourself trauma bonded and connected to all of these people. Um, remember to focus on the pure logical reality of that family and your connection to the family of origin. My parents, when they were young, made a decision to have family. This is not my family as much as it's my family of origin. Remember that. This isn't the one you created. This is, when we're talking about the family of origin, this is something someone else created. So you do not owe your entire existence to this for the rest of your life. You are not a slave to your parents. You're not a slave to your household. Thank you very much, everybody, for what you did while I was a helpless infant. Love you so much for that. I got to go make something of myself. Because if you don't, have you walked down the road of, of you not leaving, of you not getting out from under your parents' control? Have you ever walked down that road? Where does it lead? They said, we don't want you to leave. You got to stay. Stay here. Stay with the family. Where does that lead you? No, do what we tell you to do. Just do what we tell you to do. So you stay. 
you don't grow wings, you don't go off to school, you don't go off to, to do your dreams. And where does that lead you? Are they going to, for the rest of your existence, are they, we love you so much. We're so happy for you. We're so, this is my son. He's so amazing. He stayed home with us. This is my daughter. She's so helpful. She's always been. Is that what's going to happen? Nope. They're going to look at you with, hmm. Well, maybe if you had made something of yourself, like your sister did, they will actually use that as a basis to further abuse you down the line. They're going to say, ah, you don't, you haven't done anything. What have you done? You haven't accomplished anything. Hmm, too bad. I don't know where I failed with you. And that's how they'll treat you. So after all that work of making you get small for them, then they'll ridicule you for your smallness. After you've put them first, then they'll put you down. That's the truth. That's what's really going to happen. They'll resent you, and you'll resent them too, because you could have been this, and you could have been that, and you could have done. Don't go down that road. Do not go down that road. The purpose of your life is not to please your birth parents. Again, the purpose of your life is not to please your birth parents. If you're spiritual, then the purpose of your life is to please your creator. Even if you if you don't acknowledge a creator, then you must acknowledge yourself. You have gifts, you have talents, you have potential. You need to create purpose in your life. You have to decide how you will be of use, how you will be of service to your fellow man or to God's purpose for you. That's what you have to focus on. We, we cannot, oh, but my mom is sick. Good Lord. She's getting older. It's always going to be something. It's always going to be something. Take a step back. Take a step back. When you recognize that your, your family of origin is toxic, take a step back. Get away from them for a little while. Allow yourself to grow. I know there's a million financial reasons why you have to stay. Yeah, because you've already allowed them to clip your wings, clip your wings, clip your wings. Now it's time to start growing them back, feather by feather. So just start exercising a little bit of independence, a little bit of independence. Start getting little things in line. Maybe you can get your own phone on your own plan or a burner phone for yourself. Maybe you can get a bank account for yourself. Maybe you can get a car for yourself or a house for yourself or an apartment for yourself or a roommate for yourself. And do it quietly so that you can move out and move on and escape. We have to be able to see breaking the trauma bond as a logical step. So we got to get out of the emotions and get into the logic. We don't want to get caught in sunken cost fallacy. I've loved this man for so long. It's just the time spent. It's the time spent. It's the time spent. Where does that lead you to spending more time? Well, I've already put in time, so I got to spend more time because I don't want to lose the time that I put in. You're losing more time. Sunken cost fallacy. So let's break out of that. In investing, shrewd investors understand the concept, cut your losses. That's what we have to do. It's called cut your losses. That means you realize, whoops, I lost a bunch of money on this investment. I'm not going to invest more money. I'm going to cut my losses, meaning here's my losses. Here's me. Cut, cut, cut. Now I'm getting away from my losses. And then you move away from your losses. It's done. It's done. Get away from the losses. Don't say, I have losses here. Well, I need to lose more. Don't do that. Don't get in a sunken cost fallacy. That's how we get scammed. That's how we stay in relationships too long. Let it go. Cut the losses. Ah, I lost some time on that. Well, lesson learned. That was an expensive, expensive lesson. And move forward. Understand that relationships are investments. They're investments. So cut your losses. Yes, you did lose time. But now move forward. Does that make sense? If we need help being able to break ourselves out, you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one session with me. You can also do an exercise called um, the value dumping list. That's where you write down all of the values 
that this person has violated. So they're your personal values and you write down, they did this, they did that. So you can see, wow, this person has really done violations to my values. That's when, that's when you're feeling uh, like a sense of sadness over the person. You should also write down a devaluation list, five things each day that are just totally untenable about the person, the unacceptable things about them. And you must move forward in your relationships with standards, standards first. So what are my standards? And then live by that. If a person doesn't meet your standards, it's a quick cutoff. You want to cut people earlier than late.